Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we are going to be playing some ranked. Uh, I'm currently, I was literally a thousand on the ladder, uh, one zero zero zero. Um, so I want to try to rank up a bit, and I wanted to demo a deck that's been pretty prevalent early in the Ikoria meta. It is a Gyurda self mill companion deck that basically looks to clone Gyurda or blink it to get a bunch of value and put a bunch of things into play. Um, there's quite a few variations of the deck. It doesn't seem like a full 75 has been agreed upon. So Gyurda restricts you as a companion to only play things with even cost of mana. Ideally in this deck, we're looking to go two, four, six in terms of ramp. Um, so I believe Yeoman on Twitter was the first to kind of brew with something like this. Uh, Starsky, or the, they got the blue hair that won the uh, Mythic Championship. With Jund, he's played some variations. Huey Jensen's played a blue-green uh, version. Ali Eldrazi's been working on one. Uh, Noxious. So you're going to be seeing a lot of this on the ladder. Um, it is very weak to counter spells, but in like creature-based decks, you pretty much could just win uh, most of the games. And it is does have some... It feels like Maelstrom Wander with the Cascade. You do lose some games just to yourself by just not hitting key pieces. I've had some games where... I got down to eight cards and two of my cards in the deck were still end razor where like three turns in a row I could have hit it. Um, but we'll play a couple games with this, see how it goes. I've been playing this in ranked. Uh, once I do this, then I'll be working on the Demir uh, flash list and the Jeskai control list. I try to tweak those up a little bit more as promised for the rank ladder. Um, so basically what we're trying to do with this deck, uh, we have nine sources of ramp on turn two. Growth Spiral, Paradise Druid, Incubation Druid. And then what we're trying to do on turn four is uh, either ramp again or get some sort of card advantage or Thassa style effect. Um, so we go like this, we ramp ahead. Uh, I like Migration Path over, some of them are playing the Black Green Companion, the Ooze, um, that reduces uh, Umari. Um, I like it a little bit better just because the lands are permanent into play and then it kind of thins out your deck so you're a little bit more consistent. Um, I like this a little bit better. Uh, I had this originally in, but if it dies and you're kind of behind tempo-wise, the only downside is this is a, not a hit that you can get. Um, I'm going Paradise Druid over the Herbalist because we are playing some non-creature spells in ours, so I want to be able to consistently ramp. Um, and then I'm going three Thassas, some lists will play four. I want to try out uh, Luminous Broodmoth. Uh, when our things die, they come back and we can get that value again off it. So that's something I want to try out here. Uh, and then basically what you want to try to do is on six, you cast your Gyurda, you mill over, you want to try to hit copies of Spark Double. That becomes a copy of this and then you get to keep doing it. Uh, Charming Prince can exile uh, Gyurda and then bring it back, same with Thassa. There's also a cool interaction if you're playing against a deck that has sorcery speed like removal and board wipes. Um, if you have Thassa, Charming Prince, and a Gyurda out, what you do is Thassa, Blink, Charming Prince. On your end step, you exile then the Gyurda. The Gyurda goes away and returns at the next opponent's end step. So they can't be swept by sweepers or bounced or stuff like that. It comes to play at the end of their step. You get another chain going, and then you untap, and then all your creatures basically have haste because they came in on your opponent's end step. Um, some of them will play the Dream Trawlers, uh, some will play uh, the the Ape from the new set that fights, some will play uh, Dream Eater, uh, I like Trawler for the life gain, uh, Elite Guard Mage is another one with the life gain that's relevant and card advantage. So it's pretty much it sideboard wise. Um, I kept mine to all be two, or even cost so I can play them with Gyarda in the, the kind of companion zone. Um, the deck's really weak to counters, so four Destiny Spinners. Uh, for the Mirror, you have Disdainful Stroke, which hits a lot of their key pieces, some Aether Gusts, and then a combination of Devout Decree and Glass Caskets for all the aggro matchups going around. Uh, if you could control the board early, you could usually overwhelm them late game. Um, so that's pretty much it. Like I said, we are currently God, I'm 1,001 right now. So we'll play a couple of ranked matches, see how it goes, and then I'll work on... Um, the Demir list. I got a couple more budget lists that we're going to be playing as well. I just wanted to take a break. I got three of those up yesterday, so we'll work on some uh, ranked decks and then we'll go back to budget for next week. 
And as always, if you do enjoy the content, you want to see any decks in specific, you can let me know on YouTube. Uh, if you do like the content, if you can drop a comment, like, or subscribe, that'd be appreciated. So this hand, if we had another land, I'd probably keep it, but not with that. This hand is fine. A little slow, but I'm going to try to find an accelerant on two. Opponent looks to be on some sort of like elemental blink deck, most likely. Perfect. Did want to let uh, people know, I apologize for the last few videos if there was more um, on YouTube, more uh, ads than usual. Um, when I was doing the early streamer event, I had stuff kind of while I was streaming uploading as well to YouTube. So I defaulted to have um, auto, auto assign like ads from YouTube. I didn't realize it would put that many. So I went back and I revised it and I took out a lot of the ads. So I'll make sure going forward that's not the case. Okay, so opponent looks to be on some sort of teamer build. They ramped as well, so I'll highlight the card in a sec. Um, I already got two whites, so let's just go blue. Yeah, we got, let's do it like that. So next turn we're going Gairda, and we can go to hopefully off. So companion Urion, Sky Nomad. You have to have 20 more cards in your library. And then when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of non-land permanents you own, return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. So it's a mass blink. Uh, so it's very good with like elemental stuff with ETB. It's kind of like a Yarrick. So they've ramped a lot this turn, but We'll see. They also have the advantage that we can just mill ourselves out because they have 20 more cards than us. Okay, so they got Thassa. We got a Dream Trawler, but I think taking their Thassa is probably better. And we'll just play a Lime Tap tier. Um, it's pretty weak pull, not gonna lie. Got a lot of lands out of our deck. So there are um, elementals. Wouldn't mind even hitting something like Omnath out of their deck to get some card draw. Ooh, they have Agent. So that's very bad for us. So now they're going to just steal all our stuff. And I lost this one. So they're on the agent plan. So in this matchup here, I think we just bring in the strokes. They're not really going to kill our stuff. And what else do we cut? Probably cut one ramp source. The forerunners could be reasonable. I think I might cut a Thassa. There's a chance we could hit a Thassa out of their deck. So let's try it like that. So we could have tried to get another Gyurda, but they're basically getting two steals per turn. Um, and it's going to be a little bit harder for us to catch up. We can play our Thassa this turn, but they basically just flip it over. We are not drawing well. Okay, so we'll put back the end race forerunner. We're a ways away from casting that. So this is an example where we could flip well, we could just lose to ourselves. Keep the line there, that allows us to go two for Basically turn for Gaiurda, which is what we want. They may have brought in counter spells, but they are an 80 card deck, so it may dilute them a bit. So 
So I'm going to get two blue sources here. We have a lot of green and then another green-white source here. So we'll have seven mana, turn four. Spin the wheel. Do they have a counter? They have the dispute. Okay. See if they tap out again here. Um, so they can't agent this turn. I think having stroke up for future turns will be good. Okay, well, we just got an end raise. Hit him for 11. Say go. Not really sure what value this brings in this matchup at least. They could ramp ahead to six, but they're still behind. They go Cavalier of Thorns. They do have a number of hits we can't hit with between Risen Reef and like their five drop Cavaliers. Could do that. Um, they're dead. <laughs> they're dead. Sweet. So it's basically that's a game where even just not flipping well. Um. Do I want the Gusts? They brought in Dispute. Um, they're an 80 card deck. How likely are they to have another Dispute? Let's just run it back. I think we're fine like this. That was a multi six, and we turn four Gyarded. Bit slower of a hand, but I think we're gonna keep it. Like worst case, I'm gonna. I'd really perfect. I was going to say, I really want a Druid on two. So now I can go Migration Path. Okay. They draw a card that's actually better. I'd rather they draw a card than Ramp. Gonna get two islands again. So we'll see if they tap out here. Could be holding up mystical dispute. So I can play around it, or I can just YOLO it. We have the second one in hand as well. I'm gonna scry first, perfect. So they have the counter, they have the counter. Okay, 
Okay, so they bend an agent. See if they have another counter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Doesn't make much difference for Mystical Dispute. Do they have it? Jeez! Um, I'm gonna scry here. Trying to find another Gyurda. 80 card deck, both disputes in hand. Probably dead at this point. Because even this Dream Trawler is not going to do much against the Cavaliers. And then they can just bounce their board again, get more value. This might be Uro coming back. It's likely Uro. They have the ultimatum in their deck. So I have one Gyruda left. Did I play? That doesn't make sense. I should have two. See what they do here. Can't do much. And this is where like the deck, like people are saying it's OP, but as soon as you get any sort of interaction out of your opponent, then you're pretty much squashed. So I need to draw Gyurda and kind of go off. It's interesting why they didn't decide to go more. Nope. That's, we saw the good, we saw the bad. Oof, dropped us 400 spots. Let me just reset the client. It's been a bit laggy, even just loading has been slow. So that's part of the reason I'm trying to figure out like the sideboard plan. I guess any base blue deck, we just bring in the, the um, Destiny Spinners preemptively. We just get how housed by uh, counter spells really badly. Let's run it back for another one. And this is why I think like the flash decks can actually be really reasonable. If uh, you're just running against all these, like even our opponent's deck was just a pile of like one spell per turn mid range. Okay, the signs to keep. Can use this to try to find some more acceleration. Don't want spark double. Okay, opponent might be on a Winona list. So it depends on how fast they go. Could still be Winona. Uh, they play Fibblethip. Uh, as a way to trigger it. Uh, I think we keep the growth spiral. Let's 
else out of our draw. Um, so I will growth spiral into the land, and then I'm going to draw Mothra, Luminous Brood Moth, so I don't think I want the Brood Moth. I want the land, so then I untap with uh, Garuda. Definitely a Winona list. They play the War Boss and stuff. So these decks usually play Agent of Treacheries that they try to um, fall into. They are tapped out, so game one we should probably be okay. Because they won't have counters. Next turn I can spark double this. Okay, we hit a spark double. We get the spin again. Uh, let's just go Elite Guard Mage. So I could go Dream Trawler next turn, or I can just try to spin the wheel again. A bit. Actually, let's prioritize taking non-humans off the battlefield. You human, you're human. So Winona, whenever you attack with a non-human, uh, you get the trigger. Um, let's just spin the wheel. Oh no. No, 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 no. We're not spinning the wheel. We're spinning this wheel. Forgot it was legendary for a sec. Uh, that was a very underwhelming. So that's 7, 13. So they block here. They take 8, 10. Probably should have just done Dream Trawler, but if we hit anything like a Thassa or that, we would have been good. Okay, they just take the damage. Okay, so I put an agent into the hand. They can attack with... Oh, they go all. Yeah, and they're dead. Okay, so they probably bring in... Uh, hell. Well, that looks like a glitch. Ha! Ah. So thanks for Commander. And now we lost the game. Uh, this client. What are you doing, client? the hell was that so we won that game and then it said we lost let me reset this it's very annoying so we started at a thousand dropped to 99 percent arena does not like us today Hey Bowsy, I uh, haven't checked it out yet.
I just popped on and started streaming, but once this loads, we'll take a look. Sure. Guess we get free. Ooh, do I want Narset card style? Not for 500. That seems like free value. Thanks for pointing that out. All right. Let's fire this up again and hope that we actually get to go to a sideboard instead of it changing our game halfway through to Commander. And the thing is, I don't even know how if I can like report that as a bug issue, because what are they going to do? Like recreate my rank? Okay, so they're on Luros. This hand is great. So this is potentially the um, the Crokey's deck, the black red um, kind of sacrifice aggro. These are generally the hands you want going two, f three, four. And against the creature based aggro deck, yeah, it's the Crokey's aggro deck. I'm gonna go Paradise Druid here. They have Priest. It's actually worse and I should have done Growth Spiral. Actually, no, I'll still be up ahead of land. Um, so I need another white source and I'll take a blue source. Because they can play a creature, sack to priest, and they make me lose my Paradise Druid. And they can play Luros this turn. So this matchup usually comes to how well our flips happen. That's why we have three Devout Decrees, two Glass Caskets in the side. They deal two to us, plus that dying, plus that. So we took a lot of damage this turn. They can play out the Luros again if they want. Then next turn they repeat. Okay. Let's spin the wheel, see how well we do. Okay, we got Thassa. Let's just get a big 7-7. Seven, seven. Was hoping for something that turned Thassa on as well. They can make a sack, which we just sack the forerunner. So we're taking a chunk of damage here. Probably still dead this game. And we went quick this game too. This one plays four Croxas, so you just keep getting Croxa back every turn. So they opt to go a cat here. They could bring back a Gutter Bones to hand. That's actually very good tech. Then they sack both of these. They can get this back, play it for the turn. No sweep by the opponent. I think we go Growth Spiral first.
and then gain three life. Scry again. And then blink and then actually I'm just gonna cycle this on end step. On their end step. We'll gain another three life, insulate our life total a bit. Thirty-nine cards in library. So if we can draw Gaiurda, we might be okay. Dream Trawler alone doesn't do it. Double those basically puts it away for us because the problem is they just sack. Jeez, nothing but lands. So this brings our life total up again. So we are a turn off. We can survive this turn, maybe. They attack in with both of these. I block one. They can redirect some damage. Croxa comes in. They hit me for three. These two get sacked. I think I'm dead regardless. All they have to do is sack those. You're pretty much dead either way. So we'll bring in some uh, removal. Devout Decrees, Glass Caskets. In. The Broodmoth's okay. Guard Mage is fine. I'm gonna get rid of the Incubation Druid. Probably a path. Charming Princes were fine. I'm going to get rid of the Broodmoth. I think I'm going to get rid of the Dream Trawlers. So the thing is with the Dream Trawlers, chances are they can get us to sack around it. It gains us life over the Enraise Forerunners. You know, maybe let's play these instead. They can have Cat oven to kind of get us that way so this pushes through damage i think we do dream trawlers the life gain can be a lot more relevant if we can do swings of four or five life a turn it should help still think we keep this Fable Passage on one is good because it's no one drop. Okay, we do need a white source. White source, white source. Perfect. gonna gain three life here I will trade here take off the bigger one Spin the wheel. All right, we got.
got a body double. The thing is, this fuels their Croxa. I can take their Priest, but I th think we exile this. We'll get another spin at the wheel. Actually, I misclicked there. I was meant to do the, the real copy, but we got it through there. Um, I think we run it back. I'm, so Paradise Druid has the benefit of it can't be a uh, claim to the Firstborn it, when on turn two. However, Paradise Druid does have an extra point of toughness, which makes it a better blocker. So I'm wondering if we should have done a split there and then put in the Paradise Druid. This hand is great. I will keep. So depending what creature they come out with. Come on, client. think we're gonna bin that. I just want to hit my lands because we're probably not going to be ramping per se in this matchup. So I can growth spiral this turn which lets me play out two spells next turn. So I think think we do that. We take the hit. Both of these are exiles, so I don't take the damage off this Dreadhorde. Okay, so let's go... Devout Decree here. I want to keep you in the deck, I think. So next turn, I can go Elite Guard Mage, gain some more life. Yeah, I think we just do that. Insulates our life total a bit. Gives us a blocker. Untap line there is also nice. For Gaiurta. And if our flips are okay, like we did put back a spark double to the bottom. Okay, dragon fire is fine. Follow it up with Thassa, which is nice. Triple Robber. Okay, let's gain some life. Not the best flip, but I'll take three life. Next turn I have Thassa as well. They can chump lock pretty well. Oh, they had the epic downfall, so. One, two. So I can Thassa. And then I can Growth Spiral and play out another land. Just kind of turbo ramp here. Should hopefully find us another threat. 
Our life total is pretty high, and they're down to two cards. We can just cycle these, worst case. And then if we get something big, Thassa can tap down their board. I know we have Gaird at the bottom, so I might actually just do this to shuffle. Okay, so they go Luros here. So they can sack cat, cast the cat with Luros, and then have a food token left over. I think we're okay with Lion's deck. Okay, so that's that's a hell of a draw. So I'm going to save these because I can cycle them to draw cards and then uh, that protects or that makes my dream trawler bigger. And then I played out the paradise druid in case they have any sort of sack effect. I have another way to protect. So they have priest. Priest can start doing some work. But I'm hoping this stream trawler just draws us into stuff. If we can get an exile effect here, it'll be good. I got Charming Prince. I'm gonna shuffle, put more lands into play just because all we've been hitting is lands. Um, so how do we do this? Let's do this first. Then I think what I do is Charming Prince the Dream Trawler. And then blink the Guard Mage. That gives me offense, defense. Okay, so that's good. Next turn we get rid of their Priest. Probably still their priest. You know what? I should have done the Charming Prince because they can't steal it. Like this, they can technically, if they have a Claim of the Firstborn, steal. And then potentially do some shenanigans. We have 30 cards in our deck. Didn't really matter. I'm taking four there is quite aggressive, so they're digging. Second priest. 
So with the second priest, I think I'm going to exile the Luros. I think what we want to do is scry here. Okay, that is a draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I can do this six. 12, because I could just tap both these priests on upkeep, and then that way they can't activate them. So what we do, we blink here. I'm going to gain more life, draw another card. So we've just kind of won this game as a value um, Bant deck. Spark double, actually pretty good. We're doing this so they can't use the mana in their upkeep. Hey Zem, how's it going? We're uh, battling ranked as well as battling just arena itself today. Uh, I had a crash, I came back, won a game, and then in sideboard it decided we were playing a game of Brawl and changed my deck into a commander deck where all I had was um, whatchamacallit, uh, just my uh, Gaiurda, and then there's no deck list, and there's no way to get out of it, so I had to concede. So we started at 1,000 rank in Mythic, and then that game took us down to 1,400, and then we lost another tight one against 80-card uh, Elemental. So we have fallen quite a bit. Okay, so they get back Luros. Do they have a claim in hand? Drawn a lot of lands in our deck. Ten lands, lands left. So let's go to attacks. Okay, well, how many copies of Dream Trawler should we have? Magic's a fun interactive game sometimes. So I think I might have. I don't think I missed lethal there only because, um, you know what? I should have kept up the mana to tap this priest in upkeep. We do give him a, a way to kill one of our dream trawlers here. So I have two guard mage, two Gaiurdas. Q 
keep the Thassa. This one's been very interesting. So they can Croxa. And get back Croxa. They sack, get two foods. They can escape this. See what they do here. This one has been a sweet one. Okay, we have another oven. They're dead here. Like they could have red cat melee, but that doesn't really like it can stop my dream trawler. For a game where we've drawn, I think there's 27 lines in this deck, and we've basically drawn all but eight of them, 19 lines. Okay, back into the numbers. Not too shabby. What's up with Arena? All right, I think I think I'm going to call this one quits. Um, I'll come back later today. We'll play some Demir Flash. Um, but I can't even... This client is ridiculous right now. I can't even go to the next step. Um, Bowsy pointed out, for those of you who haven't, the daily deal today is if you spend 400 gems, you get 500 gems. So you get free 100 gems. So probably something to worth keep in mind. Uh, it's just kind of free currency for the game. Um, I'm going to wrap this one up. I'll be back later today with some Demir Flash. We'll work on it see how we can do in the rank ladders with it, and then take it from there. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Have a great day, and stay safe out there.